It's a good field. Johnny Gregorik's in it. Uh, Henry Wynn is in it. However, there is a big omission. Just like in the women's 1500, no Jenny Simpson. It's going to feel strange not to call Matthew Centrowitz's name. Absolutely. You know, there's a couple big stars out. Also, Cole Hawker, who was sick at the Olympic Games last year, didn't make it through the heats. And so that really opens it up for a new experience, some fresh faces to come up, some new people to step up into the light. And it'll be interesting to see what we have here. Cooper Tier is sort of boxed in there. And he talked about how he's not used to 1,500-meter tactics. He really only ran them sort of in a time trial effort during the indoor season where he would run extremely fast. But he doesn't have a lot of experience here. And he's been learning strategy as he goes through the rounds. And here he is in the final, boxed in a bit there. Jonathan Davis takes the lead early on in this BD men's 1500 metre final. Just getting back to the Rio gold medalist, uh, Centro, Matthew Centrowitz. He had surgery on his knee recently. He'll be out for a few months. Um, so we wish you a speedy recovery, Centro. Look forward to seeing you back on the track. Eric Holt, all in yellow there, sits in a, uh, a strong position in the top four in this early stage. Jared Nagus on the far left there in the white top, the only Olympian in this field. You know, they're also running slow. This is a woman, This is a four-minute pace that they just came through on. These are women's times, and I think it's a little hot. These are people who aren't necessarily used to leading races, and so we're seeing, seeing strategy really come into play here. But just like we saw in the women's race, I do believe at some point we're going to see someone turn on the burners and say, you know what, we got to separate this pack. Right now we see Reed Brown from the University of Oregon leading. Then Cooper Tia, who won the 5,000, in the 2021 NCAA Championships. And he's been running so fast this year. He really has been the fastest 1500 meter in the US. But he, again, he doesn't have a lot of experience in this situation right now where you have to match moves and see what's happening. Yared Nagus has put himself in a good position. Sits third at the moment with two laps to go. So he's put himself in that spot. And he said he felt like he was in a better position. Uh, in his semi-final than he usually has and felt like he needed a good finish. It was a pretty frantic finish in his semi-final, but he hung on to win that and feels good. But Lee, this is still very slow. We are going to see something erupt very, very soon because these men can't all come down the, the finish line with a, in a lap all together. So we're seeing people kind of look. You can even see their eyes shifting around, waiting. Who's going to go? Who's going to take it? Might be Sam Prakel. Look for hip number seven. There is Sam. Third from the right in that white and blue color scheme there. Hip number seven. And he feels good at the moment as well. He was a finalist in the 1500 at last year's Olympic trials. So Prakel may have something special here. As they're coming to the bell lap. They're coming to the bell and this is messy. You can see the jostling, you can see the pushing. This is when it gets very, very dangerous because they're all about to flip a switch here and really go for it in the last quarter. And they all have to be weary. They have to make sure they don't knock anyone else down. Now we see Gregor come to the outside as well. He has said he really needs to stay calm at the beginning of the races. He feels like he's always forcing the beginning. But look at this, we see Eric Holt come out here. Eric Holt is in the mix. Sam Prakel is in the mix. Johnny Gregoric is there as well on this final lap. Sam Prakel went to the World Indoors this year. That was an experience he had never had, and he gained so much confidence from being there. And he's leading this charge now. But i got to tell you, seeing Eric Holt here, this could be a huge story. His dad said, if you're not going to get a real job, you better run fast. Run fast. You're going to make that World Championship level as well. And then streaking out the outside as well. Cooper Tia, listen to the cheers. They know that he's run here before. Cooper Tia, terrific. Jonathan Davis, a strong finish. 3.45.85. Cooper Tia wins the BD Men's 1500 and is a national champion. Well, that answers a lot of questions. People said they didn't know. Could Cooper Tia run a strategic race? And he just did to become the national champion. <laughs> Had to work for that. Look at where he is, Kara. He's fifth on that last lap. Yeah, he's coming from way back, and he's boxing. He doesn't have good position, but he stays calm, and he works his way through here. And as he comes to the home stretch, he moves out, gets a clean line, and just hammers his way home. This is an excellent race out of Cooper Deere. He has really become a next-level athlete. What about that finish from Jonathan Davis as well in red center of your screen? He led on the opening lap and surged to get second 
on the final lap ahead of Josh Thompson. However, at the moment, Davis and Thompson don't have the World Championship standard, so they're going to have to wait. But celebration time for Cooper Tier. Great race out of him. He is entered in the 5,000 tomorrow. We'll see if he decides to show up to put a cherry on the top or if he takes this win and heads his way to the World Championships. By the way, that World Championship standard is 3.35. You see the winning time there of 3.45, but Tia does have that World Champs 